Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about these cool Christmas ornaments. Well, actually they're pomegranates. Hi everyone, this is Dwayne with Edge of Nowhere Farm and we're coming to you today on a beautiful Saturday afternoon, uh, middle of December. Uh, it's about 65 degrees. All you guys back east, if you're watching, I'm sorry. I know it's really cold back there. Uh, but uh, our trees are finally figuring out that it's fall, uh, almost winter, and they're getting with it on uh, production uh, as far as our fall production. So today what we're going to be talking about is pomegranate trees. Uh, what you see behind me is our wonderful pomegranate. Um, yes, we think it's wonderful, but it's also the variety. It's a wonderful pomegranate. Uh, so this is actually one of the first trees that we put here on the property. It was part of our initial plantings. When we first planted it, it was about mm, two or three feet tall. Uh, and you can see now it, it, um, I, it just dwarfs me. Uh, so I'm going to guess it's probably about 15 feet tall or so. Um, and then as far as um, depth, you can't see how far across it is, but it's probably a good maybe eight to 10 feet across as well. Um, so just a, a, a great, amazing specimen. Um, again, not quite three years old. Um, started producing fruit for us uh, the second year. So we started getting fruit last year. Um, and we actually get two crops out of this thing, believe it or not. Uh, I'll talk about that here in just a second. So uh, just real quick on where we're at. So uh, we're actually on the west side, excuse me, the west facing side of our property. So we're on the east side of our property. So this area is back where we've got our fig trees as well. Gets just blazing sun all summer long. Uh, and still you can see even in the middle of uh, winter here or middle of uh, fall winter here, I've got the sun coming down on my face. It's warm back here. So a little bit chilly when you get out into uh, kind of the breezy areas of some of the more open areas in the orchard. But back here, it's really, really warm still. Really perfect climate for these guys. Uh, originally, these are a, a Middle Eastern Mediterranean uh, type uh, fruit. Um, so if you're here in the Arizona area, um, I know I seem to say this about every tree we have, but if you don't have one of these, you got to get one. Uh, what's nice about these trees, you know, we let it grow because we want to have an, uh, you know, a lot of production. Um, but these trees can be managed uh, much smaller than this. So if you've got a limited amount of space, um, all you need to do is prune these back. They're very, very forgiving as far as pruning. Um, and I will be doing some videos on pruning, but uh, this one, we don't do much as far as pruning. We really just kind of raise the bottom of it up. So we prune out the bottom uh, so that we're not surprised by snakes or anything that we don't want to, or that we want to see, don't want to be surprised by. So we do that as far as pruning. Otherwise, we don't do much. Um, produces really, really well for us. Uh, and I'll talk more about that here in just a second, but I want to talk more about where I'm at. So back here on this corner, um, what you can't see on the other side of me is our fig trees. And uh, if you want to, I'll link our fig tree video here. But if you haven't seen our fig tree video, they're right on the other side. So very similar microclimate um, back here with figs and our pomegranates. Um, so we've got four different varieties of pomegranates. Uh, like I said, the one behind me, the one we're going to be talking about today is the wonderful pomegranate. To my right is the Austin pomegranate, and we liked this one more than anything because it's named after our son. Something like that. His name is Austin. It's Austin. I'm going to say it's named after our son. Why not? Uh, but we just planted that this, uh, this spring, actually. He went into the ground in late February, um, already over six feet tall. To my left is the angel red pomegranate. The angel red pomegranate is a soft seeded variety. Um, so this one went into the ground last fall. So it's a year old now and it's up above six feet as well. What you can't see is on the other side of this pomegranate, uh, we have our granada pomegranate. Um, so that's a, a variety very similar to wonderful um, as far as uh, the, the color of the aerial, aerial, aerial the seed inside. Uh, this one's super, really, eventually really dark, so is that one, that one as well. Angel red is light uh, with the softer seed. Austin pomegranate is a, is a darker red and a hard seed as well. So back to our pomegranate tree. So uh, one of the things that uh, we, are, uh, we struggle with here is um, protecting this tree. Believe it or not, we actually have a bird. Uh, it's our curve build thrasher uh, that loves to peck holes into these. Just a single hole, very small. You can tell it's a bird. Uh, and what they do is they kind of sip some of the juice out of there right in the middle of summer. Challenge is when that happens, uh, it ruins the fruit. Uh, they just immediately uh, start to get mold and bugs and uh, just eventually drop off the tree. So about half of our production, we lose to that. Uh, at least we did. Um, and what we decided to do was something very similar that we do with our fig trees. And what we do is we use organza bags. So I'm going to lift some of this up here now, get one up off the ground actually. 
so you can see. So we've got an organza bag around these things and actually it's done a great job of preserving our harvest. Essentially what this does is it keeps the birds from pecking that hole into it. Uh, and so that way it actually survives into December. So the organza bags are over this to protect it from birds. Um, otherwise, these really don't need much in the way of protect protection. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick this one for you guys. So you get an idea. Now this one is probably an average size pomegranate for us. Uh, they get much, much bigger, uh, probably double this size. Um, but uh, ultimately we've got uh, a wonderful pomegranate. So ripeness. So one of the challenges with pomegranates is trying to figure out when they're ripe. They are ripe in December, um, but uh, from what I've read and understand and what we've seen to be true as well, these really don't ripen off the tree. So the challenge is figuring out when these things are ripe. Um, one of the ways we've been able to determine that is when they start to split. Um, so once they start to split, uh, they're basically ripe. Um, and even some of the ones that we pick early, when we cut them open, they're not necessar necessarily that dark red color that you're used to seeing, but they're still very, very sweet. Um, so they're still ripe. They just don't have that dark red color that we're always looking for. So uh, this is, a, again, kind of a little bit on the smaller side, but kind of an average size, about the size of a softball. Um, again, they get, do get to about twice this size. Um, but what I do want to come back to, I talked a little bit about uh, two crops. So these guys here, uh, these flowered, uh, I want to say March, so right around March or so. Right now, this tree is finally starting to go dormant. It'll lose all of these leaves. Uh, it'll be completely bare. Um, once we get into February, uh, starts, we get past our final frost date in the middle of February, this thing starts to uh, get some green back onto it and it starts to flower. So these fruit actually set in spring, not ripe until the middle of winter, very, very similar to citrus. Um, but we actually get a second round of flowering out here. So if you look up here um, at this fruit that you see we don't have covered uh, with an organza bag, this actually flowered and set fruit about two months ago. Uh, so we get a second flowering on the tree and it goes all the way up to the top. So we've got several of these up towards the top. What's amazing about these fruit, they're not as big as these spring set fruits. So these are much, much bigger. But what's really cool about these fruit, number one, we don't get the bird pressure because uh, we don't have those curved bill thrashers running around. I don't know, I'm assuming they just hole up for the winter or something. But uh, so we don't have that curved bill thrasher. And what happens is in another week or two, these guys here will break open. And these are the ones that consistently so far have been our darkest red pomegranates. Uh, so not as big, um, but in like two months, you go from flower to ripe fruit. So we get that second little set of fruit, which is pretty cool uh, on this tree. So what we're going to do now, we're going to take a quick break and come back to you. We're going to show you how we process these fruit. So we'll be right back. Okay, so we're inside the house and we're going to go ahead and show you how we process these, um, or at least our preferred method. So um, wonderful pomegranates. Um, wonderful pomegranates have a hard seed. Um, so what we like, and what we're all really going for anyway is the juice. So we figure, well, let's go ahead and juice them. So the way we juice them is we use our juice press, um, which I'll link our line video so you can get an idea of how useful this is. And there, I think I even mentioned uh, the fact that we do pomegranates this way as well. Um, but uh, this is just a quick uh, harvest that we did from the tree uh, today. So you can see the different sizes. So we got this one here. I mean, I don't know how big my head is, but just to give you an idea of size compared to my head, um, it's a pretty big guy. So he's bigger than a softball, um, a nice big fruit. Um, another one that's pretty big, again, about the size of a softball, um, looks really, really good. I think this one's going to be a nice ripe one as well. Uh, one that's a uh, little bit smaller, it's kind of soft, so I think it might be beyond ripe. Uh, so we'll kind of see once we get that cut open. And then this guy here, which kind of feels pretty good. So I'm thinking this might be the better one. And he's starting to crack, which is what they do when they get ripe. Um, so I'm thinking this one might be pretty good to see. So again, what we've been finding uh, over the last couple weeks is we've been harvesting these uh, it kind of goes back and forth. We get some that are uh, like a light pink, some that are a darker red, not completely red. Um, so I'm hopeful that hopefully by today, uh, we'll have one that's a little darker. We haven't picked one for three or four days, um, so we'll see how this one does. So juice press, again, uh, if you guys have seen some of our, our other videos, you've seen how we use this. Um, so this juice press, uh, we got it off of Amazon. I think it was like 70 bucks or so. Um, so we use it for citrus and pomegranates. Uh, works really, really well, even for really small citrus. Uh, looking forward to when our mandarin trees start doing really well, uh, that just juicing those, I've uh, just been told is just amazing, but back to pomegranates. So, uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna juice this guy. Um, so I'll show you how to do that. 
So what we do is we uh, cut the flower end off first uh, so it gets flat. And then what I do is actually cut this, I don't know, um, longitudinally, longitudinally, latitude, longitude or latitude. I can't really tell which one. I don't remember, not a geographer, whatever that is. But uh, ultimately what we wanna do is we wanna cut it this way. Uh, it makes it easier for us to juice. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this open for you guys. And yeah, this is kind of what we've been finding with all of them. So uh, if you see, it's some of it's actually a nice pink, uh, almost red color down in here. Uh, so it's really just kind of starting to ripen. Uh, and we've kind of seen this off and on with our tree. Um, so, but we've got some that's kind of lighter pink, kind of a darker pink down here. Um, so we'll show you how to go ahead and juice this. So the juicer or the juice press itself has this kind of cone. So what we do is we drop this on top of here. So now sometimes what I've found is they're kind of hard to juice. Now this one did pretty good. So get it about that far down. Lift it up and then what I'll do is I'll spin it. And then do it again. Get a good amount out, out there. And then for the most part, we got the majority of the juice out. So um, ultimately, if you look at this, still some juice in these guys. So what I'll do is just take this guy here, slide him back on top, push down all the way, get a little bit more out of there. So now one thing for those of you out here who have chickens. So if you've got chickens, chickens love to finish off your pomegranate seeds. So what we do once we're done juicing them here is we actually feed these to our chickens and the chickens will finish the process of getting the seeds out for us uh, and any remaining juice they'll you know obviously love that as well uh, do the other half here spin it all right so now what i have this draining into is one of those little Pyrex measuring cups. So from that guy, we got right at about four ounces of juice. You can see it's more pink than red, um, but very, very sweet. We talked about it before, our morning routine is to uh, do juice and smoothie. So what we actually do is we take this and we add it to our juice. Um, so it gives it kind of a real nice tart, sweet, you know, pomegranate flavor. Uh, so we do that. And again, what's left here, there's almost no liquid in this. So it's, it does a really good job of extracting the pomegranate liquid. Um, and of course that dark color um, liquid is what we're looking for. Uh, but it does a really good job of getting that out. And then we take this, feed it to the chickens. So it does not go to waste. None of it does. So thank you for joining us today. And this is Dwayne and Lori reminding you, if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you. Yeah. Hi everybody. I don't know where to put my hand. I feel weird. Okay. I can't go to, I can't have a laughing. Stop laughing. It's okay. If we can, now I wanted to say thank you for joining us. Did I say thank you for joining us?